stair and ramp vignettes. Uh, the width of the stair as it relates to the area of, area of rescue and the width of the ramp at 180 degree turn versus a 90 degree turn. Um, so the width of the stair um, as it relates to the area of rescue is truly weird. Um, so you're gonna have to read very closely on the uh, code for the uh, stair uh, vignette. Um, so you calculate out the uh, total occupancy load, right? You're sort of looking for how, what's the, you know, how many total people. So we're looking for the occupancy of each floor. Um, and then you're gonna divide that by however many stairs there are, any exits are, which is either gonna be two or three. Um, so I'm gonna take that occupancy and I'm gonna cut it, let's say it's, I have an occupancy of 320. Well, I'm gonna cut that in half and, because uh, I have two stairs uh, and so now I have uh, 160. Um, so I now have to make sure I go through the numbers and I say, all right, 160, you know, what kind of width do I have? I'm going to go through that whole set of calculations. Um, and often those calculations will end up being, the load will end up being smaller than the minimum width. And so the minimum width will be actually the width that you're using often. Sometimes um, that uh, 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 with minimum width typically is 44 inches. Um, uh, sometimes it'll be up to 48 inches, sometimes it'll go up to about 60 inches. It's pretty rare that you're gonna get a situation on the exam where it would be bigger than 60 inches. That's a pretty particular situation. Um, you start getting into complications of having to add uh, center uh, railings. Uh, people have told me that they've seen that, but I, it just seems unlikely. I don't think it would happen very often. It seems, it seems very unlikely to me. So your range is really between 44 and like, you know, 56, 60, somewhere in that range. Um, so imagine you have it as the, it's that you're only required say 36, but the minimum is 44. So you say, okay, we bump it up to the 44. And then on the second floor or on the mid floor, uh, I have an area of refuge. Um, there's a little caveat in the code. Um, I don't know if it's always there, but it is in all the examples that I've seen. Um, a little caveat in the code that says, if there is an area of refuge, then the minimum from that point down the stair is 48 inches. And the reasoning on that is that um, in our very high tech world, the very clever, smartest way we've ever come up with of dealing with somebody uh, in a panic, in a, uh, in a fire, in a wheelchair, is they go into the protected stair, because uh, the whole stairwell is supposed to be protected at some level, uh, they go into the protected stair and they wait in the area of refuge until some burly fireman comes in and carries them down the stairs, which seems crazy in its uh, low techness. Um, but that's as good as we've ever come up with. Uh, so the idea of having it that extra size, that extra width uh, from uh, uh, the area of refuge down is just to give an opportunity for the firefighter to be able to physically carry somebody down while somebody else is going up and down. Um, so it's a strange little caveat and it has a couple of, of odd little bits to it. Um, for one example, the handrails for the minimum width stair, uh, let's say 44 inch, the handrails are allowed to be actually inside that. Um, there's a certain limit to the distance so you don't want to do it too far in, um, but let's say you put them in uh, where they're, they're three inches in, something like that. Um, that gives you a little bit of room for your hand to be able to grab the handrail and it kind of comes into the space. We have two questions. Um, are the codes provided in the tips for the stair ramp vignettes, or is that knowledge you need to know going into the exit? Same thing for stairs and handrails. That's a great question. Um, there are certain things you should just sort of know how to do. You should have had some practice. You should have done a stair or two in your lifetime uh, to sort of be able to, to do these uh, uh, vignettes. But um, it's actually the only things they can really test you on are the codes that are given in the uh, vignette. Uh, they, the, all of that code will come in the vignette. And the reason for that is, you know, you can't, uh, you know, the Chicago code, for example, has, uh, even though it's now based on international building code, has a different uh, railing height in certain, certain scenarios than uh, other codes do. You, you know, it can't be that, that they would be so specific that you would have to know that. Um, so they give you all the information that you have to deal with, but you have to read it very carefully to try to understand it because it's worded a little oddly. 
So let me just get back to the thing about the, the handrails being able to be within, within the width. So that means the handrails, the width of the stair is the 44 inches, but the handrails are within that. On the 48 inch one from the area of refuge down, that's actually not true. It's actually from handrail to handrail. So it's a, uh, uh, you have to be very specifically reading through that. Once you've read it a few times and once you've practiced it, it actually comes through very simply. And it may, that, that particular uh, code item may not be there on the one that you're working with. So you wanna know how that you, you know, practice them, test them out, try to, to get to know them, but be willing to like, go back in so you know what the code is gonna be before you even start the vignette, but then go read it again anyway because there could very well be uh, something that's a little different and the, they might have a slightly different uh, way that they word it and you wanna pick up on those changes. It'll probably be the one that you've, you've practiced on, so it's probably not a big deal. Um, so that's the weirdest thing about that and then from there that 40 inch would go all the way down. If your width was say 56 inches or, or 60 inches, uh, already because of the calculations, then it wouldn't affect it because you're already more than, than that 48 inch. All right, now regarding the uh, ramps, the big thing on the ramps is that um, if I have a ramp uh, that's coming uh, and it has a, a minimum width of let's say uh, 48 inches, so the, the width across is uh, 48 inches, uh, and then I have another, another portion of that ramp uh, is going right there, and that's also got that same minimum. Um, I can't just have these meet in a straight corner because um, uh, I actually need to have a five by five space for the turnaround. So I get this kind of funky little extra uh, corner built in there. Um, and what the exam um, allows, because Part of the point of the exam is can you figure this stuff out in an economical way? What the exam allows you to do is to say, all right, well, that's a little crazy. Uh, why don't we just have it be five feet wide? Oops, sorry about my not straight line. Um, I wonder if I can do that, do that again here. Um, there we go. Um, so, this is, uh, I'm, I'm wasting space on the extra width of the ramp, um, but I'm also making a much simpler to build element. It's just, you know, that, that one corner instead of this first example, which had uh, three corners. And those corners are all very expensive for the railings and for all the little knee walls and curbs and everything. Um, so uh, you will often see that people will suggest um, that you do for a 90 degree turn that you do something like, like that. Um, if I'm doing a switchback, uh, I lose the advantage. So on a switchback, uh, I'm gonna have a situation where um, so I'm coming say up that ramp and continuing up that way. Um, this dimension is gonna still be that five feet um, but the, the width of the ramp can be whatever the minimum is because there's, I'm not getting that same clean line thing out of that I'm getting here. If I just do the five foot um, fully here, it, it doesn't get me anything. In fact, it's a little wasteful. Um, so the idea that I'm coming around that ramp and it's, I'm keeping with the minimums uh, on the, the width, but then I'm making sure that I have at least that five foot dimension there. So I still have that five foot circle capacity uh, uh, on that landing, that's, that's sort of the difference between doing a 180 versus a 90 degree turn. Now the caveat to all of this is that um, I can't create a situation where, or I shouldn't want to create a situation where I go from a five foot width to a, a 48 inch width to a five foot width to a 48 inch width um, because it just gets goofy and um, you, you're, uh, when you're doing egress work, it should always be uh, that it is uh, continuous as much as possible. Um, so hopefully that was clear, uh, but the idea is that it's different on a 90 degree turn than it is on a 180 degree turn.
Today's ARE Live episode is an extension of our online ARE curriculum that you can find on blackspectacles.com, the home of online learning for architecture and design. If you need to prepare for the ARE, which I assume many of you guys do, and if you're looking for a good way to study for the exam that's more flexible and easier to digest than the traditional exam prep materials, then head over to blackspectacles.com to try out any of our free ARE video tutorials that are taught by tonight's presenter, Mike Newman, and that are built in collaboration with AIA Chicago. As an attendee, and as you can see here on the screen here, we have a couple of notes or information for today's episode. Anyone who is attending today's session, you're eligible to use this coupon code worth 15% off the first charge on your individual membership. If you're one of those folks who would like for your firm to purchase Black Spectacles access for you and your colleagues, just visit blackspectacles.com business, which is this fourth link here, and we'll send all the information for your firm to get set up. And also from now until the 15th of next month, firm memberships are 15% off if you mention this episode when you submit your form through blackspectacles.com. Business. Also on this, you'll see that our next webinar will be on May 27th with Mike at six o'clock. So if you'd like to register for it, here's the registration link. We're still firming up the details and the actual topic. So if you have any suggestions and would like Mike to cover a specific topic or would like us to interview someone in particular about a specific topic, please let us know.